it. So moved back to my hometown. Funny thing happened when I moved back to my hometown. I actually got elected mayor of my town. Yeah. Oh, thank you. And the thing is, I ran for office as a joke. Like, I got my name on the ballot as comedian Jeremy Nunes, and my campaign slogan was, put a real joker in office. Because I was like, who would vote for that person? 80% of the town. <laughs> but I guess I did an all right job. I actually won an award for being one of Illinois' most ethical mayors. So, oh, yeah, thank you, thank you. Uh, and it was largely because I issued a fine to my parents. I remember my dad calling me when he found out. It's like, Jeremy, why did I get this fine in the mail? I was like, well, your grass is way too high. You have to mow your grass. He goes, Jeremy, you mow our grass. <laughs> I go, well, you should have called me sooner. <laughs> and what a weird job. I had to review people's resume that wanted to work for the town. You know, one guy, his email address on his resume was Bank robber 24-7 at AOL. <laughs> I was like, how creepy is that? Like, obviously, I cannot hire someone who still uses AOL. <laughs> Another guy, I was interviewing him. He wanted to be our city manager. And I said, can you tell me the difference between a regulation and a statute? And he goes, sure. Uh, regulation is a rule or a code you have to follow. A statute is a sculpture, like the Statute of Liberty. <laughs> I hired that guy. <laughs>
I did. That was a writer's uh, contest for the Hot Breath Comedy Network. And um, okay. I I want to say I play second, but it could be third. I don't know. We're not really <laughs> sure where it is. I didn't win. I was kind of bummed because I was all excited to open up my M&M, you know, celebration candy container. But going to have to save it for another time. So, you know. You'll get them the next time, uh, right? Michelle. You'll get them the next time. And I, I mean, good gosh, you got so close. You'll get, you'll definitely get them the next time. It's no question. We're going to go back into Mark chapter 14. We left off at verse 29. And we were talking about some interesting stuff too, before we last, uh, before we broke off. But before we get started, Cornbread, how about a word of prayer, brother? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, just thank you for this beautiful day that you've given us. We're we're so excited for, for fall weather to be here uh, with uh, all the colors that, that you bring into creation during this time of year. And Father, we just uh, are, are, it's a time of harvest for, for the farmers. And we just pray that, that likewise in the spiritual world, that we will also see it as a time of harvest, a time to, mm -hmm. to gather together and to, uh, to bring into the storehouse. Father, just thank you for all the blessings that you sent our way. Bless our time together. Uh, open our eyes to the truth that's in your word. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Jesus Christ's Amen. name. Amen. Amen. I tell you. And, and, you know, and Jason Earls, by the way, he may be stopping in. We'll, uh, we'll see if he oh, nice. can squeeze in some time. But the last time we were together, we were on verse 29 in Mark chapter 14. And we we're talking about where Peter declared that even if all fall away, I will not. Yeah. Right? Like, how many times have we all made declarations like that in our life? You know, I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna, I got you back. You know, we, I got you. I got you back. You know, or I'm God. I promise, if you do this, I'll do that. You know, and then God <laughs> does His part, and then we go. But you know, God, I, I don't think it's a good time of year for that. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, have you ever had a moment like that, Don? <laughs> How many times can I count that up? <laughs> I will never do fill in blank. And yeah, well, you know what? Here's the thing. We look at, uh, you know, Peter with great disdain, quite frankly and honestly, for doing that. And and I think, Cornbread, you, you made the comment that you weren't so sure you wouldn't have done the same thing, you yeah. know. And, and if we're all honest with ourselves, there's a lot of stuff that, you know, we probably wouldn't do or we probably reneged on. And I mean, where the Lord is concerned, God is so good and, and grace, grace, mm -hmm. gracious that he's like, OK, I'll let you go. I, I knew you were going to back out of it. That's how good God is. That is. You know, he doesn't slam us. No. You know, he gives us an opportunity at redemption all the time. He does it all the time. That's how good he is. But, you know, we, we look at Peter with that side. I like you, you, why you, we give him the business. Yeah, <laughs> we do give him the business. Yeah, we, we give <laughs> we Peter the business. We don't have any business. business giving him the business when they look in the mirror, you know? <laughs> we actually give him the business. That, it's like, oh, gosh. There, there, there's a verse that I'm very thankful for that says, uh, we say, God, your mercies are new every morning. Come on. There you go. And there you and go. I'm glad his I'm glad his mercies are new every morning because I, I don't want to pay the bill for all the, all my yesterdays. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So we got we got our good buddy from Chicago, Illinois checking in with us right now. Dave Ebert. What's up, Dave? Hey, what's going on, everybody? I'm sorry. I from some reason I was thinking five thirty. Uh, so I'm a little bit late to the game. Sorry about that. That's okay. That's uh, you're here and it's all good. We, we, we're just getting started. Um, and we're talking about Peter, how, how bad of a deal we give Peter. Cause he, he, uh, he reneged. He's, you know, he said, I don't, who's the Lord? Who, who's Jesus? What? Right. Uh, I, I speak Hebrew. What are you, where do you, anyway? So, uh, so anyway, that's where we left off. And we're going to go back into this now, pick it up at verse 30 in the NIV, Mark chapter 14. Truly, I tell you, Jesus answered, today, yes, tonight, before the rooster crows twice, you yourself will disown me three 
times. But Peter insisted emphatically, even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And all the others said the same. So he wasn't alone. He had some buddies with him there that agreed. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. He took Peter, James, and John along with him, and he began to be deeply distressed and troubled. Um, so he, he's very troubled here. My soul, verse 34, is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. He said, stay here and keep watch. Going a little farther, he fell to the ground and prayed that if possible, the hour might pass from him. Abba, Father, he said, everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me, yet not what I will, but you will. It's interesting that at this point, Jesus is like, I do not want to do this. You know, that's one part of the story sometimes that we, we forget. Jesus actually tried to talk God out of this. And, of course, you know, God was not going to change his position on that. But the Holy Spirit, you know, he, he drives us into these things. Because God was, like, not going to change, but the Holy Spirit was driving Jesus forward mm -hmm. to the cross. Mm -hmm. You know, that, was the, that gave him the ability to drive forward because the humanity— in Jesus was like, I can't do it. In mm. fact, I'm not going to do it. God, I can't do it. You got to get me out of this. Yeah. yeah. And, and then understanding that God was not going to change his mind, the Holy Spirit, you know, caused him to dig his heels in and go to the cross mm -hmm. to yeah. do the, the unthinkable or the impossible. Go ahead, Michelle. Yeah, I, I know, like, um, in the beginning, you know, was was the word. And so that was Jesus. And he was with the Father and the Holy Spirit all at the very, very beginning. And since God already knew that man was going to fall, he already had the plan in place. And so I, I believe that Jesus already knew the plan that was going to be happening. Mm -hmm. And I yeah. think what you one of the key words that you said was, you know, his humanity. So when yeah. he was actually here on earth, identifying with man because he became a man. He came the right way. He came, you know, through a woman. And so he's on earth legally and he's yes. in the human form. Yeah. I do really think that he was completely overwhelmed with the sorrow of, of really feeling what man was feeling and, and the separation that we have from God and knowing that, He's the only one that can go through. So I really feel like he knew what he was going to be doing, but getting hit with the humanity and the reality of, oh, this is happening soon. Mm -hmm. I love the fact that he brought a couple of his buddies with, even though they weren't there, they weren't praying with him. They were close in proximity. Yeah. And I really feel like when like I know when I'm not feeling great or if I'm, sorrowful or if I have a heaviness on me, I reach out to my friends. I reach out to a couple of my girlfriends that are very close to me. Yeah. And I'm just like, oh guys, can you pray? But sometimes they don't have the time to pray. They don't have, you know, they're they're busy with their own lives, you know, kids and and animals and you know all sorts of things. So they can't take the time to pray, but the burden is still upon me. So I still have to spend that time praying. But knowing that they're there and at some point they'll see my note <laughs> or they'll see my text that I know that they're going to be praying for me or they will, they've got my back. Mm -hmm. But here he just, he knew it was just him and God. Yeah. Even though he brought his friend. I just, it, it's amazing um, just how God had this whole plan already planned out. And the fact that at any moment, any moment Jesus could have said, yeah, no, I'm out. I'm done. Mm -hmm. He could have. Thank God he, he didn't. Like he, I'm so. Oh. He, he could have, and yet it seems he was e even close to actually doing it. But I, I I look at the humanity of it now. I'm kind of free uh, speaking here. I'd love for you to uh, maybe clear this up. But I look at it like this: the humanity mm -hmm. was was so strong. And now we look at our lives, 
and and so many things that we we just don't want to do, can't imagine. And they're good things. Mm -hmm. They're responsible things. They're they're big, sometimes responsible things. And, and we, we but we don't we we don't think we can do it. Like that's too much, mm -hmm. though. Yeah, Lord, I should, but I can't do that. And then because we do have the Holy Spirit, we we've done a lot of things. I don't know about you guys. I'm just going to throw it out. Have you ever done something you knew that you were supposed to do and it was a it, but you thought at the same time it's beyond you. You did it yeah. and you did it well and you kind of went, man, I, I can't believe I did that. I, I cannot believe. And then you go. But it was the Holy Spirit that drove you to do those things. Have you guys ever had an experience like that? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there, there's a couple of times just reaching out and talking with some homeless people and things like that. And you're like, yeah, you, you didn't expect that to happen. Or um, one time I was with my friend and I just felt like I was supposed to pray for her. Mm -hmm. And because she had like she had some back issues, her back was hurting her. And I just kept hearing I kept hearing myself talking and then I I was watching like God do a miracle and like take away the pain and things like that but I it wasn't me it was I was just there I was just the vessel I I just I saw her I had compassion for her like we should pray and ask God to take this pain away and then we watched him do it and it was definitely not me That's yeah good. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think they're just things that if you really, you know, did some soul searching and thought about some things you've probably done. And it's like, oh, my God, I don't I don't believe I just did that or I don't believe I yeah. actually did a certain thing. But the Holy Spirit will drive us like Jesus was driven to the to, to the cross. The Holy Spirit will drive us to do things that we don't want to do. And, and and we'll get it done. And it probably happens a lot of times. And it might be something that we might deem as small. Mm. Mm. But it's like you do it. it and it's the right thing. You know what I mean? It's the right thing to do. And the Holy yeah. Spirit will have us do that so many times in our life. When you're performing. Mm -hmm. When you're on that stage. I mean, I, I, I told you guys before. I've, I've, I've gone into some rooms that I'm like, I don't believe I'm going in here. <laughs> I, I'm like, I don't believe yeah, I'm getting yeah. ready to do a set here. Yeah. And and then you go up there and you do it anyway. And it actually turned out pretty good. Like, how am I gonna get this room? Yeah. And you go up there in a wing, literally on a wing and a prayer. <laughs> you know, but we're kind of like daredevils as comedians. We'll kind of like do anything. <laughs> we 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 kind of like nuts. You know, it's like I tell my wife every time, it's like, you know, that's like an evil Knievel getting on a bicycle before I go on stage and jump it over 20 cars. Because I'm like, I'm getting ready to do this. I don't believe I'm getting ready to do this, but here I go. You know, yeah. and, 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 and it's kind of a sick thing because most people don't understand it. And then you, you don't even understand it. You know, it's like, Lord, what am I doing up here? Because we're not doing it just for comedy. We're also doing it because we want to be a living witness for Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I got, I told you, I got caught up in a deaf comedy jam room. I've been there several times <laughs> now, but it's like, how are you going to make this thing work? And just, mm -hmm. and I, I'm, I'm like, I don't, it's got to be the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. that, that drives us to do some of those things in comedy in particular. I, I've done a lot of rooms when I look back on it and I go, man, I, I do not believe that I've done comedy in, in some of these rooms. And now it's like nothing to go to these rooms now. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going over to the so-and-so's place tomorrow. Yeah. So whatever. <laughs> hey, Maurice, uh, but, yeah. Maurice, before we leave the gardens, I want to share just a quick two-minute or less uh, summary of a of a great devotion that we had this year at the Inspirational Country Music Awards down in sure. uh, nice. down in, in Gatlinburg. And it was a music evangelist by the name of Ronnie uh, Hort and his wife is Lisa Daggs. It's in a lot of the Gaither videos. But but real quick, four mm -hmm. gardens in the Bible, the Garden of Eden, where mm -hmm. sin originated, and there it was foretold that Satan would, would strike the heel of the Son of Man 
Mm -hmm. But that the Son of Man would crush the head of the certain serpent that was yeah. foretold in the Garden of Eden. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now we're garden number two. We're at Gethsemane, mm -hmm. where Christ mm -hmm. is praying with his friends, preparing for that next step where he's yeah. going to leave this garden of Gethsemane. He's going to go to the cross and, and have his heel bruised, as was foretold in the Garden of Eden. And then he's going to be placed in a tomb in another garden. Yeah. And on Easter morning, we're going to see the stone rolled away. And we're going to see the in the third garden, the victory that was predicted when Satan's head is crushed. That was predicted in the first garden. Okay. And then the last garden is in Revelation when we enter into New Jerusalem. And it talks about how the New Jerusalem, the city came down, the capital of heaven and that there mm -hmm. there was a garden with 12 different kinds of trees mm -hmm. and one of those was the tree of life that was back in mm -hmm. the original garden garden number one and okay. that's why adam and eve were cast out of garden number one so they wouldn't eat of the tree of life but we'll eat of it freely when we get there in revelation chapter 22. so that was just such a a, a great devotion that that we had at, at the inspirational country music awards and uh I just wanted to share that. That was, you know, because we're in garden number two this week, but in a week or two, if we continue down this path through uh, through Mark 14, we'll, we'll find ourselves in garden number three. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, great commentary, Cornbread. Thank yeah. you for breaking that down, man. That's uh, that's really interesting. Um, and, and yeah, you know, it, it, it's so much that you, you, you took out of that. I didn't see all that coming. That's good. Cornbread. Uh, <laughs> great. That, well, look, let's keep going. Let's soldier on. We're on verse 37 now in the NIV of Mark chapter 14. Uh, hey, uh, then he can I, can yeah. I jump in real quick? Uh, yeah, go ahead, Dave. One of the things that, you know, we're talking about Jesus was in there praying and, and he's asking, you know, Lord, take this cup away from me. Lord, find another way. And he knew what had to be done. He knew that he was going to go through with it. But he, I think that as much as it was the flesh being weak, it was also Jesus giving us another lesson that it's okay to have those moments of fear. It's okay uh, to to seek God for strength and for help and for an alternative way. It's okay to have those struggles. He was teaching us in his final moments as a human being that it's okay to struggle. It's okay to have moments of fear, but don't let the fear par paralyze you. Mm. Uh, so I just think it, it was, it's an important lesson that, you know, sometimes we want to squelch our emotions. We want to hide our fears. We want to say that all fear uh, is, um, is a sin when it's really not. Jesus showed us that it's okay to have emotions. I really well, like that. Yeah. Good word. Mm -hmm. really yeah, like I mean, it's, it's, it's a, that's one thing that we have to accept, you know, as part of our humanity, that we do get angry, we do get fearful, you know, we, we, we have all these, these negative emotions that are still active and alive in our human bodies. It's the, the Holy Spirit that gives us the ability to override those things. But they're there, and it's normal, and God knows that you're going to have these feelings. Yeah, and that we don't want to be uncomfortable. We don't want to be in pain. We don't mm -hmm. want to suffer. You know, those are not pleasant thoughts to think that we have to walk through that. So I really like that point, David, or Dave, really like that point a lot, to sit in the uncomfortableness with him, that he is with us. Yeah. And, and that's... You know, uh, and that, and that's something that we, I don't know if you guys ever digested how fearful Jesus was well, at I that would moment. Be like, good Lord, <laughs> it's like he really oh, was. He, he really tried to get out of that, and and it's uh, it's quite amazing, you know, when you understand that he was God and man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, the two. The, the twain met there. He's God and he's man. And so that helps us to understand a lot of how he was like, he's letting us know we can do that. A lot of the things that we can endure everything he endured because we have that same Holy Spirit within us mm -hmm. that raised the dead. It's right here within us. 
it's like we, we have to like digest that too. Like in all of our faults and all of our weaknesses, we have the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can do things. We can't. We can't even imagine the great things that we can pull off. We can't. We cannot fathom it in our minds that we can do so many unreal things because we have that otherworldly aspect to our characters that we don't we don't really acknowledge very often or you know really understand very well like hey you're pretty powerful dude you're pretty powerful gal for real you know what i mean and and if we we really understood that part of things like i think we would overcome way more than half the issues that we grapple with every day great mm. i mean just simple easy stuff to just reconcile and it still befuddles us and it shouldn't mm -hmm. you know I, I i watched tony evans the other day and he talked about his daughter priscilla shire receiving a letter from a minister in Afghanistan after we left the embassy and he said that they're going to probably be killed in two weeks by the Taliban. Mm -hmm. And they were like ready like that, but it's okay. We're ready to meet our Lord. See that, that kind of otherworldly faith, we can't fathom. Mm -hmm. we, we're, we're not faced with those things. You know, we can go and have our Starbucks and talk about faith, but we, we have no idea, but, that's where the rubber meets the road when you're faced with situations and issues like that. Can you go to your death if it were required with calm and faith and understanding, hey, I can do this. I can I can definitely do this. And 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 that is is the power and that's the garden experience. Yeah. I think mean, Jesus himself is in that moment of I can't. But yet he can and did mm -hmm. and saved mm -hmm. all of us and we have that same kind of power because i tell you right now guys i'm i'm so fearful in the age that we're living in right now the state of america right now particularly as it's regarding christians something's coming down the pike yeah. and we better be ready for whatever it is to stand by faith i'm telling you something's going on right now i can just feel it yeah I can Absolutely. feel it. And and we're going to have to be ready to stand by faith. It won't be any human humanity standing. That ain't going to work. We'll run just like that guy that ran down the road with, you know, no clothes on after he grabbed Jesus. That that part of us, we want to run up. Take all my clothes. I'm out. I'm gone. I'm chucking deuces everywhere. I'm, I'm gone <laughs> anyway. Um <laughs> Check but that's the, the 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 God man is in us. Like, oh no, 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 no. I'm standing by faith. I'm not voting yeah. for Christ. Yeah. That that challenge is coming to to, to the American Christian. That challenge is coming to the American. I'm, I grant you. That challenge yeah. is coming to the American Christian. But I, I think I think part of that's already here. I, you yeah. know, the, the challenge of will you stand for Christ up until death? Yeah. I don't think that's happened to a lot of people. It's, it's happened to some, but not not the whole church body in itself in, yeah. in America. But right. Right. how do we get to those points where you can stand and after having done all to continue to stand? Yes, how do you get to that point? You don't right. just jump into it. So no. I know that that in, in God's grace and mercy and, and training us and teaching us to stand firm in him comes from those little tests, you know, yeah. are you going to stand uh, for, you know, for your beliefs or for your principles in this situation? Yeah. Are you going to yeah. stand for this situation? Are you going to stand at, Oh, Oh, now your job is requiring you to have a shot or a not no shot. Like, like where are you standing on the, and, and I'm not making this political. I'm just saying that's just a, a very prominent thing right now. Where are uh -huh. people standing on that? Are they quickly just buckling? Like, Oh, I'm never going to have a job if I don't do this. Well, why didn't you do it six months ago, nine months ago? Why did you buckle now? Because now something is going to cost you. Right. So let's, let's back that up. Yeah. 
you know, where are you here? And, and I have to say, Maurice, I really don't think that Jesus was actually like fearful. He was under a lot of sorrow. And I think it's a little bit different than fear because, because he says, I have not given you a spirit of fear, you know, uh-huh. and, and I've come to give you life and life more abundantly. And I don't, I don't, I don't really think that he actually was, was fearful in that sense, but, but sorrow and, and like, you know, just like when I have a heaviness on me, that's just one person. That's just me. He had not only my sorrow, he had Dave's, yours, cornbreads, Dawn's. He had everyone that was, that was before him, you know, everybody that died mm-hmm. before him, he had all their sin. He had everybody that's to come. He's got my grandchildren, which aren't, they don't exist yet. He's got their, their sins. He had everybody's upon him. Mm. And, and I think it's, I think it's, 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 it's a little more than like fear because fear is he's afraid of it. And I don't think he mm-hmm. was afraid of it. And I think that that's why he had to keep pushing forward. It was more like being a marathon runner and, and hitting that wall and knowing mm-hmm. that you have to keep running forward. You're not afraid of continuing, but you know the pain that's coming because you still have to go and you're feeling that pain and you still have to keep pushing forward. I think it's more of a, an athlete kind of, you know, pushing forward kind of a deal. And clearly <laughs> I'm not an athlete anymore. Used to be, uh, <laughs> but I th- I really feel like it's, it's like that kind of thing. So when he, when he leaned in more, when he prayed again and, and prayed again, he's like, God, if you could take this away, that'd be great. But because the finish line is still over there, I'm going to keep going. I, I, I don't, I, I don't think he was afraid to, to push forward. I don't, does that make sense? It does. And I can buy that. I, I think that, you know, uh, what's shocking for me is because I, when I look at Jesus having a weak moment, it's, it's shocking for me. Like that's Superman. That's my Superman right there. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. that's how I look at Jesus. So when he's yeah. having that weak moment, it's something that makes me pause. Like, wow, this is, this is different. You know, you don't, yeah. you like just don't imagine him doing that, but no, I, I totally understand what you're saying. And, I could definitely believe that. It's just it's just the shock of it. Like, oh man, he's he's actually, you know, kind of perplexed and upset. And it's not a normal vibe that you get from him. But uh, mm-hmm. no doubt. It, uh, excellent commentary, Michelle. Um, let's keep going. Uh, yeah. verse 37, Mark 14, NIV. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Uh Uh-oh, Simon, he said to Peter, are you asleep? Couldn't you keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Now, there's a lot to unpack there in, in those two verses right there. Cornbread, would you care to comment on those two verses? Yes, and 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 tying in with with uh, what Michelle was saying, uh, in Luke's description of when he's in the garden and and, and praying that uh, sorrowful prayer, I think actually in the King James in Matthew it talks about being heavy-hearted and sorrowful, but mm-hmm. in Luke it it says that an angel appeared unto him. It's not found oh. in Mark or Matthew, but in uh, it's in Luke chapter 22 uh, it talks that an angel appeared to Christ and strengthened him so okay. it, it gives us a, a reassurance in addition to knowing that Christ went through what we went through that God also sends angels to us that when we are in these yeah. types of, of periods where we are are feel beat down and defeated mm-hmm. and, and uh, hopeless or up against something that's more than we can handle. Yeah. Uh, if God sent an angel to strengthen Jesus, then I'm pretty sure that I need it more. Okay. I, I think <laughs> if, if, if the angel was there to strengthen Jesus, he might have to send four or five to help me. <laughs> I need a legion. <laughs> I well, right a whole, a whole 
<laughs> was there was there a moment in the Passion of the Christ where an angel came to minister to him? I, I'm not. I know there was a I, demon I remember, there. I remember right. in the Passion of the Christ, you know, that Satan was there. Right. You know, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Him down. Yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, I don't remember if there was an angel in, in the Passion uh, that came to strengthen him, but you know, I just matter of fact, I was just thinking, you know, uh, sometimes I feel so beat down. I'm going to tell. God send me a six pack of angels because I <laughs> <laughs> but 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 getting on to, to your thing about the uh about uh the, the people sleeping. Um uh, yeah I don't know yeah. about y'all, but I, I remember as a kid, uh we went to church Sunday morning, Sunday school, Sunday morning preaching, Sunday evening, something called training union, which was evening Sunday school, followed yeah. up by Sunday evening service. And, uh oh, oh my goodness. And I remember as a kid up until I guess I was about eight or nine years old, some of the best naps I ever had was while other people <laughs> were praying and stretched out there in the pew. <laughs> and I was lucky because I was when I was real sleepy like that, my uncle was the pastor. It was a Southern Baptist church, and my uncle was the pastor. <laughs> and my my Aunt Edith was the pastor's wife. Now, my daddy, if I went to sleep in the pew where my daddy was sitting, it'd be pop up back the head you know, <laughs> and, and wake me up. But if I was feeling sleepy, I'd tell dad, I'm going to go sit with Aunt Edith because I could go <laughs> I could go sit in the pew with her. And she let her, let nephew Kenny stretch out there in the padded pew and get a nap and just <laughs> at my little head and tell me it's going to be OK and sleep right through the sermon. So some of the best naps I've ever had was in church. So I I can I, I can understand uh, Peter and John and James getting their nap while Jesus was praying. It it, it ain't right, but but I, I've been there, done that. Well, you know what? Here, I I guess what Jesus is saying here because he Jesus is quite displeased here. He is yeah. very displeased. He, he's quite displeased. He's like, hey guys, it's just for one hour. Uh, you know, I'm about to go to the cross. I mean, your 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 dude is about to, you know, yeah. chuck the deuce here. I mean, I mean, can I get a little something? I mean, even the brothers in the hood pour a little bit of, you know, uh, wine on the ground or something. You know, I leave it alone. Can you just <laughs> one hour? Can you get <laughs> so uh, anyway? <laughs> yeah, let me ask you a question. Yeah, had Peter stayed awake and prayed that entire hour, those couple times Jesus kept going back and forth. Would he have had the strength to do, uh, to not have denied Christ those three times? I don't know. That's a good point. I don't think so. Really great question. But it had already been yeah. prophesied, so. Yeah, yeah that's but what I was thinking, yeah. But, yeah. like, had Jesus thought, all right, Peter's going to stay up. I don't need to prophesy this over him because he's going to have the strength. It's uh, almost like it's the, the domino effect. Almost like when um, Neo goes into the Oracle's kitchen and she's like, would you have broken it if I hadn't said anything? Hmm. I don't know if y'all watched The Matrix or not. That might have been before y'all's time. <laughs> hey now. Yes, I'm very young. It's way before my time. Yeah. Don't I, let the gray hair fool a, you, Dave. It, well, no, no, it's, it's, a, it's a really good question. I, I just think that, you know, Jesus is really, really... Uh, th there, there are points in our lives where, you know, sleep shouldn't matter or doesn't matter. There, there are certain times in our life where it's time to rise up mm -hmm. and, and, and we have like um, reserves of strength that God has provided for us to endure certain moments in our life where it's like, you, you know, you don't you don't really need sleep right now. You, you need to do this. You need to stay up all night and work on this. And you will have the strength to get through tomorrow without sleep because you got to do this. I mean, I was able to do it. You know, studying geology in college all night long, you know, and just before a final exam, certainly I could stay up one hour anyway. Um, you study geology like rocks? <laughs> is that is that what I'm hearing? Like, like rocks? So, you know what? It was just an, it, it was just an analogy. I did not study geology. I have no idea. Oh, okay, I'm like, wow, before the rocks cry out, yeah, you're doing a Christian. I love this. So, no, okay, never mind. Carry <laughs> on. Now, the rocks, the rocks would be crying at me if I ever tried to take a geology exam. They would, they would have 
pity for me. Oh, I'm sorry. I just, Were you stoned <laughs> during college? Is that what you're saying? Like that? <laughs> oh boy, we're getting warm. Oh boy, are we getting warm? Oh my, are we getting warm? Uh, but PC. Sorry. Here, 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 listen. <laughs> Here's Sorry. the deal. We, we have, I think when, you, <laughs> when you're talking about sleep, again, Jesus gives us the ability to endure all kinds of things. Yes, yes. I yes. agree. All kinds of things. Like new mothers up all night, you know? Right. There's also, new mothers all. I mean, my yeah, gosh! I mean, ladies yeah. could tell us a thing or two about that. Yep. Um. <laughs> all right, guys. You know what? We're gonna keep going on yeah. before we get before we end up back on geology. We don't want to talk about <laughs> geology. All right. So, uh, let's oh. keep it rocking. <laughs> <laughs> very nice, dude. Oh, very, very oh, nice. Uh, so we are. <laughs> We're on, let's see, verse 39. Okay. So let's pick it up, Mark 14, verse 39, and we're going to read to 42. Once more, he went away and prayed the same thing. When he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. They did not know what to say to him. Returning the third time, he said to them, are you still sleeping and resting enough? The hour has come. Look, the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. So, I mean, th this is uh, this is interesting right here because I'm getting out of this one, Dave. That if if we don't wake up in a lot of areas of our life. We'll find out it's it's too late. We missed our opportunity. And how many times did Jesus speak in parables about being ready? Uh, the, you know, the parable of the uh, the brides that uh, let their uh, their oil run out, and then the bridegroom calls for them, and they're like, "Oh no, we need to get oil," and it was too late. And yeah. these guys, they let their oil dry out, and they're just they're asleep. Because when you got a group of three guys hanging out there, possibly a fourth, depending on if like somebody's hanging out there taking notes, because somebody had to be writing down all the, these stories, uh, they couldn't come together and say, guys, we need to stay awake and support Jesus. He's in trouble. He's feeling the weight of something. And uh, it's just, Jesus is always reminding us to be prepared and be yeah. ready yeah. and not look too far ahead to where we miss what's in front of us, but at the same time, be prepared for what comes. Because one of these days, the church is going to be asleep when That's the accuser good, or the, the beast comes. And right. it's going to be up to us in the church to be awake, to help warn people like, hey, you know all that stuff that Jesus said? Yeah, it's true. Look, look outside your door. That beast is rising up. Don't take the mark. Don't take this. Because Jesus warned us about it, but we have to be awake in order to tell people. Otherwise, the the accuser, or, or in this case, the betrayer. Uh, which, if you think about the devil, he is a betrayer since he turned on God. You know, we got to be ready. We got to be awake. We got to support each other and keep each other awake. Uh, when we see somebody's head start to droop, tap them on the forehead, like wake back up, get get back in prayer. Well, look, yeah. here, here's here's the thing that the the American church has to realize. And uh, my son, he showed me a snippet of Dave Chappelle's uh, special. And I'm sure you guys have, are aware of the stir he caused in, in speaking towards the LGBTQ community. And so and I, I'm going, wow. Well, he he didn't say anything that was technically wrong. Uh -uh. And I always look at it like this. If you go to a comedy show, just lighten up. Yeah. <laughs> just, just lighten up. I mean, it's a comedy show for a reason. They call it comedy for a reason. We're just having fun. Relax. And I find it interesting when people go to a comedy show, and especially in 2021, no one would be able today able to handle Richard Pryor or George Carlin. Oh, no. They wouldn't be able to handle it. And, and, but, you know, no one got mad during that time. But now everybody gets mad about this. They get mad about that. Oh, my gosh, I'm, I'm so upset. You walk into a comedy club, just be prepared to have a good time. 
Yeah. You know, and when your turn comes around, because everybody's getting made fun. There are some comics that like to make fun of everybody. And that's fine. You got some, that's how comedy is or whatever. But when it's your turn, laugh, keep laughing. Yeah. It's your turn. You were laughing at everybody. Now it's your turn. Because that's how comedy works. If you go into a comedy club, especially if you sit up front, you got to get picked on. Yeah. Were you going to say something, Corbett? No, I was actually just killing the gnat. There was a gnat. Oh. Right <laughs> I thought he was clapping for you there, Maurice. I mean, <laughs> the flies are drawn to the brightness of that shirt. <laughs> well, yeah. They thought I was a flower. <laughs> oh, man, that's funny. But anyway, so my, my whole point in bringing that up about Dave Chappelle, let me get back to my point. So Dave Chappelle did all that. And I told my son, he showed it to me. And I said, you know what? Dave Chappelle is probably closer to the church than he realizes. Right? Because if he's he's very angry about a lot of things and salty about a lot of things, but he's telling a lot of a lot of accurate truths, right? And I said, I bet that, that guy is closer to the church than he probably realizes. Now, let me say this, because there's a way to convey facts. And it's got to be done in a Christ-like way. You can tell the truth in a lot of cases. Sometimes there's nothing you can do. People are going to get mad. They're going to come after you. We know that. Mm -hmm. I don't care how nice you are. They're coming for you. Mm -hmm. But in a lot of cases, you can convey a truth without stepping on somebody's toes. Truth and they can kind of get it or at the very least respect you for it and still disagree. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so my point is the church is silent on way too many things. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. We, yeah. We've fallen asleep in America. Mm -hmm. the, the American church has fallen asleep. And, and, and we are under a judgment right now. I believe but, it. You know, not, not only in America, but in the earth. You know, but but I would say primarily in America because this is the this is the, the 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 country where everybody wants to come into because of the freedom and the ability to to live your life. And we we're not doing anything but enjoying our Starbucks mm -hmm. and having our private convos and we might chip away at something here that needs to be dealt with wholeheartedly. We might nip at it. We might nip at it. Mm -hmm. I did something, I said something. <laughs> I anyway, uh, so <laughs> what? But I'm just saying, the American church is too quiet. Yeah, yeah. And and it's time to step our games up because things are about to get really real. I yeah. I can I can feel that coming. This COVID nineteen thing is crazy, beyond crazy. I mean, you kind of uh, slightly alluded to it, uh, Michelle, about people losing their jobs. People can't make up their mind whether or not they get. I'm gonna get a shot. I, am I gonna save my job? Am I gonna bite the bullet? Am I gonna slap a lawsuit on this company? Whatever. I mean, you know, it, it is a mess right now. Mm -hmm. I, I can only imagine right now how ugly it's going to get when these deadlines hit and people are on the street because they didn't take the shot. Right. It's and, and I'm not I'm not advocating yay yeah. or nay. I'm just talking about confusion. Right. Yeah. I'm just talking yeah. about confusion mm -hmm. and, and it's a lot of it building up. So you look at Dave Chappelle, he's addressing issues. The church won't even think about addressing. Mm -hmm. He's up there doing it the wrong way, but at least he's attacking it with cold, hard facts. Church isn't doing a thing. But Maurice, the, the church has to be love. We have to be like Jesus and just love everybody. Cause if we love them just enough, then they'll find that, that they need to be in church. There it is. Oh, there sorry. it is. Wait, I... <laughs> That's it right there. And, I, <laughs> and I'll tell you. So I, I'm just saying it, it's it's a time for the American Christian to step their game. We've got to step our games up. It's yeah. called faith and trusting the Holy Spirit to do whatever he wants to do. Thank However you want to use me, Holy Ghost, use me. Go ahead, Michelle. OK, so which brings us right back to these these scriptures here. You know, Jesus went away and prayed the same thing. 
you yeah. know, so three times he went and he, he kept praying, right? Yes. And, yes. and he, they, he came back, he's like, hey, you couldn't stay awake. And of course, you know, I love, I love the line, like, uh, they didn't know what to say, which I love, because uh, we're like, not going to know what to say <laughs> when, when God confronts us. Uh, but yeah. He said, he said, the hour has come. Are yeah. you still sleeping and resting enough? The hour has come. Yes. And so I was looking at, you know, the, in, in Ezekiel, it talks about watchmen. Right. And so watchmen yeah. are supposed to be the people that are up on top, paying attention to what's happening. They they lean forward. They peer into the distance. They they are, you know, keeping watch. They're spying. They know what's happening. And then they're supposed to be the ones that say, hey, you know, um, such and such is happening. Oh, that field over there is on fire. This is happening. And so they're <laughs> supposed to relay that information. And then the rest of the church is supposed to get up and go take care of it. Yes. Or prepare for battle or, you That's know, right. that kind of thing. And so here Jesus brings his three watchmen with him, his three closest buddies. Yep. And he's like, all right, pray, you know, spend some and wait, you're still sleeping. And so this is the church, the close, the hour. There you go. Has Perfect. come. So we're right at the hour coming and church. Enough. Wake up. We need to stop Perfect. resting. We need to stop going, oh, but it's not my problem. Oh, That's it. That's it, Michelle. The, just the people the building are supposed to take care of. Oh, I'm not a pastor. I can't do that. No. <laughs> Everybody, once you're a believer in Christ, you are the church. Yes. Wake up. Wake yes. up and do what you're supposed to be doing. Come on, people. Let's go. No, no. <laughs> Very well stated. That's exactly yeah. what it is. That's Where a perfect analogy. And, and, and now I'm just saying, you know, it's, it's, it's getting ready to go down in some kind of way and we'll be yeah. fine. I don't, I, I'm not even preaching gloom and doom. What I'm saying is we just need to be in position to be used by God, how he wants to use us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, and, and we'll be, you know, we'll, we'll be fine as long as we're in position to, yeah. to follow instructions. And who do we follow? That's the thing is like, how do we trust who's saying what, that's you know, like, like, Oh my like goodness. Right that's, now, a, that's, that's the $64,000 question. Yeah. Oh, my lands to, to watch like, Oh, you know, like people were, um, you know, we, we had this president and this, that, that happened. We have this president, this, that, that, and, but everything's corrupt. Every, so how do you it know, is. how do you know when it, what to follow? You got to check in, you got to check in with God and you'll know, you have to. you'll know. Anyway. Yeah. Some, of, some of these people, uh, were you going to say something done? Yeah, I was just going to uh, piggyback on that, though. Michelle is absolutely right. It's, there's so much confusion right now that we that's exactly where we need to look is in the word, the wisdom of the Holy Spirit, Jesus's example. Um, and I think it's a really good reminder for all of us to remember that not everybody was a fan of Jesus. He had a lot of enemies. He yes, had a lot he did. of enemies for standing up and saying, this is the way it is. This is the truth. It, what he did do also is model how to tell the truth with compassion in love, even though he knew he was going to get spit on, even though he knew he was going to mm -hmm. get rejected. That yeah. did not change the way he shared that truth. You can't yeah. control someone else's actions, but you can control your own. So you That's can right. use his yeah. model on how to do it. And just know that some people are going to reject you and spit on you. That's just like the way it's going to go. <laughs> that, that's the way it's going it, it, to. Listen, yeah. I like it. I like it where where the Lord says he will set a table where even your enemies will respect you. They may not like you. They, they may hate your gut, but they will respect you if you're willing to hold the line. You know, and and that's what's coming up in our in our nation. The Amer I'll go as far as to say this: the American Christian has been put on watch. Okay. The American Christian, period. I got there, a there got a question for you, Maurice. With that, that what yeah. you're sharing. So, what do you think? What are some of your initial thoughts on what you think? Uh, we would need to do as a church to stand up right now in the midst of this confusion if it's headed our way. Like, are there some initial thoughts that you think? I honestly, the, the, the only thing I can say on that, Don, is uh, the only thing I know is that we're silent. Okay. Uh, that, that's the only thing I know. We're not saying anything. So People don't even take us seriously. 
You know, they're they're a joke. Yeah. And 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 we're we're pushed over in a corner. They don't even think about us. Only thing they want to do is just stomp on us. And 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 they don't expect any rebuttal or reply or retaliation on any level. Not that we would retaliate in the way that they attack, but we're not doing anything. We're just taking it. We're just in the corner going, just beat on me. Anyway, um, yeah, we well, gotta do a better job. We gotta do a better job. Yeah, we're also picking the wrong hills to die on um, <laughs> in the church. Uh, there are yeah. certain things that you know we we will speak out against. We'll share and like and tweet and retweet. Uh, but we also ignore things and it just makes the church look like hypocrites. Mm. We'll speak against gay marriage and, and this and the other thing. Meanwhile, we also turn the other way when a priest is accused of touching a kid. Yeah. Uh, he'll get shuffled around. Yeah. Um, we'll ignore the adultery in the pulpit, but we'll, you know, we'll talk about abortion. Uh, yeah. All of these are things that need to be talked about. And instead we just pick what's going to be politically advantageous for what we think uh, is is the political game. What, Meanwhile, what, we're dying on the wrong hill. So what you're saying, Dave, and I'm in total agreement with, is the church is unwilling to get into uncomfortable dialogue. Right. Mm. We are unwilling to do it. We're afraid. And, yeah, and, and I and think it's because we we're you not gotta, ready. You've got to do that. So Yeah. No. And, and I don't there's think a way there's to enough. do it the right way. Yeah, there is. And, and I think it comes down to studying. You got to study to show yourself approved. So if you want to be in a political realm, then you need to study politics and get ready and, and have your talking yeah. points, but also have the backbone to stand for yeah. it. If you're gonna, you know, so you got to have these things. And that's you why I love, I love this. And I love listening to Cornbread when he gives his commentaries. I'm like, oh, I didn't know that. That's really good. Like there's, yeah. you know, it, yeah. I like the truth of what we're hearing and learning and, and yeah. breaking apart and expounding. Um, and part of, you know, like when you said that, that the priest, you know, so like the Roman Catholic church was like the voice of God for the longest time. And so their God is dismantling that thing, you know? And so now it's, well, where do people turn? Who do they trust as their leaders? And so that's where it's just a hodgepodge right now of just this person's voice, this per and so yeah, so we need we need our leaders to rise back up to the top again, but we need to pray and make sure we have the right leaders in the spot so that way we can follow that vision and go forth and, and do what we're supposed to be doing, like Maurice was talking about. Yeah. Signs and wonders are coming back, but yes. through who? Through who? And how about this for a challenge to the church? Stop treating single mothers like they're sinners. Mm. Stop putting a scarlet letter on them. They may have sinned in order to create the child, but the child is not a sin. Let's love them and, and help them and not turn and shun them. Let's not shun people who have sinned because of their sin. Let's welcome them Amen. in just like Jesus did. That's Amen. right, because no one and is without sin. That's you know, right. The baby's yeah. not sin. The baby's the yeah. blessing. That's right. There you go. And and guys, with that, we are going to have this has been a great conversation. I hate <laughs> having to dip out of it because it's been really a cool convo, but we're going to have to dip out. Uh, much thanks and love to KCHF TV in Albuquerque, New Mexico, every Saturday night at 8 p.m. We are on live, and you can check them out at kchftv.org if you want to check it out. Uh, we are going to see you guys next week as we continue through Mark chapter 14. Uh, and you can do the message or the NIV or whatever. Don't, don't do the message. But uh, we'll be back uh, next week, everybody. Have a blessed week. God bless you. <laughs>